The Black Dahlia, a policeman's story. I was a cop in Los Angeles for almost 30 years. I had seen some of the most gruesome crime scenes you can imagine. Gangland shootings, automobile accidents, even the victims of arson, unlucky enough to be burnt alive. I remember them all, yet nothing haunted my nightmares like the case of the Black Dahlia. Seems like only yesterday that I stood at the edge of that crime scene. A rookie cop grappling with the tragedy that lay before me. Fresh out of the academy I was. I hoped that none of the officers noticed my reaction. It was a chill January morning and yet I started sweating when I saw her. The Black Dahlia. That's what the papers named her. Elizabeth Short a name whispered with reverence and dread in the hallowed halls of the LAPD. The scene was a tableau of horror, etched into the very fabric of the city. The body severed at the waist lay in a vacant lot like a discarded doll. The acrid scent of decay hung heavy in the air, mingling with the faint aroma of nearby orange blossoms. As I approached the body, my heart heavy with sorrow and disbelief, I couldn't help but offer a silent prayer for the soul of the departed as I gripped the rosary beads that my mother gave me for protection against evil. The scene was something out of a nightmare, a grotesque distortion of reality that threatened to swallow me whole. I forced myself to focus, to push aside the horror and do my duty. The newspapers would later sensationalize the case turning it into a macabre spectacle for the masses. Everywhere you went, people were talking about the case. Everyone had a theory, a mad scientist or a doctor of some sort. For me, it was a solemn reminder of the frailty of life, a testament to the darkness that lurked in the hearts of men. This thought stuck with me and made me grateful for every day above ground. Remember your training, I told myself. I began to search the scene for clues, my hands trembling as I sifted through the refuse-strewn vacant lot. And so I labored on, my hands guided by a sense of duty that burned like a fire in my soul. The LAPD, the county sheriff, and the FBI. We all ran records checks on potential suspects. We rousted the usual creeps and criminals, we even investigated medical students at the local colleges. At one point, we had over 150 suspects. We came up with nothing. The FBI even conducted interviews across the country. We lifted a fingerprint from an anonymous letter that was possibly sent by the killer to a local paper. The FBI had no record of it in their database. Maybe the papers were right. Maybe he was a ghost. The Black Dahlia's murder remained unsolved, a haunting specter that loomed over the city like a menacing shadow. The killer was never brought to justice. That fact would forever leave a scar on everyone involved in hunting the monster. It was only the collective resolve of the city itself that refused to be cowed by fear that wouldn't let the darkness win. Many people blamed the police for the lack of progress in the case but we didn't have access to today's technology. And unless the killer himself walked into a police station, it, well, I guess there's no time for excuses. And though the Black Dahlia's killer was never brought to justice, I take some small solace in the knowledge that we left no stone unturned. For even in the darkest of nights, there's always a glimmer of hope, a light that shines through the shadows. I crossed myself once more as I left the crime scene that chilly morning, a silent prayer for her soul. The black dahlia may be gone, but her memory remains, a reminder of the fragility of life and the power of remembrance. <laughs>